Fast food workers in California are another step closer to a higher minimum wage. This week, the state's legislature passed a bill called the Fast Recovery Act. It would create a fast food council. Please take a look at that amazing graphic created by our News Nation graphics team. Now, this council would be composed of workers, employers, government appointees to set state pay and safety standards. The council would have the power to increase next year's minimum wage up to $22 per hour for businesses with more than 100 locations nationwide. So we mean businesses like Starbucks, Chipotle, McDonald's. And right now, California's minimum wage is $15 an hour. Supporters of this bill say the council would help with, quote, wage theft and unsafe working conditions. It's a huge leap forward for all workers across the country, but especially right here in California. Well, not necessarily surprising, the fast food industry opposes this bill, saying prices would go up with the cost being passed on to customers. One business association says this could force businesses to actually leave California. Bill is based upon a flawed premise, this big lie that franchise businesses are worse employers than non-franchise businesses and that we need to create this fourth branch of government to regulate them separate from the harshest laws that exist in the country already. All right, so the bill now heads to Governor Gavin Newsom's desk, although he has not stated a position on this legislation. So increasing minimum wage will benefit the worker, obviously, although it will likely come at a cost to the consumer. So the question for our panelists, should this type of fast food council with the ability to set state standards be a nationwide standard? Should all states be doing something like this? Dr. Corte, we want to start with you. Thank you. Uh, you know, I, I, I certainly think uh, we should start in California and see how it goes in California. I know there are other states that are looking at similar measures, states like New York, states like Illinois. But, uh, you know, I think whenever we're building a longer table of partners at the table, especially folks across, you know, the business community, the labor community, government, to establish an industry-wide minimum wage as well as health and safety standards, I think that fundamentally benefits consumers. And let's also remember that this bill would cover as many as over half a million fast food workers in my home state of California. Uh, uh, and, you know, so I think, you know, these fast food restaurants, you know, they're not going out of business anytime soon. They have posted record profits. I think it's fundamentally a good idea for them to, uh, to share in those profits with the workers that make that possible. So this is a good day in California, and I hope Gavin, uh, Gavin Newsom uh, finishes the job by signing it into law. I think that, um, you know, people that have never ran a business before kind of have these preconceived notions of, you know, how much money or how profitable a business actually is. But there was a 2021 report from the nonpartisan, I will remind you, uh, Congressional Budget, uh, Budget Office. Basically, it said that um, should the minimum wage go to $15 nationally by 2025, that it would cost about 1.4 million jobs that was, that's about 1% of the total people employed in the country would lose their jobs. Additionally, it would increase the federal deficit by about $54 billion over the next 10 years after 2025 because of increased spending on federal programs like Medicaid, food stamps, welfare. Um, the fact of the matter is, at the end of the day, certain in certain markets, yes, $15 an hour for a fast food job makes sense. But there's other places where, quite frankly, it doesn't. I mean, I, I know before uh, the last time I was in New York, a lot of the McDonald's now are operating basically uh, robotically. You know, you have to punch in your order. It's costing jobs. So if there's going to be less people employed. Doesn't that kind of defeat the purpose of raising the federal minimum wage if you can't get a job? You know, right. I you know, actually I would would echo what Julio said. Uh, sorry, I would just point out that they did try something like this in Seattle, and it it resulted in businesses leaving, and it resulted in lost jobs. So what we had was one, a lot of those restaurants left. And let's keep in mind, if you're going out to restaurants, I'm a mom, I do it a lot. We're on the fly a lot. <laughs> a lot of times now, these restaurants aren't open to the same capacity that they were before because they're already having trouble getting workers. So look, they are already 
the markets at work starting to offer uh, higher wages. If you drive around, you'll see the signs, $15 an hour, $17 an hour. They're out there, so the market is working. But what you're doing here is em employing something artificial that is just going to ratchet up this um, automation revolution that we're seeing. And so it's just going to increase. And look, it's not like it hasn't been tried. It's been tried, businesses left, people were laid off, automation was increased, and we're just gonna see that more and more. Um, th this isn't a question of, is it good for the workers? We actually know it's not good for the workers. That's not true, and I'll tell you why. Because number one, I live here in California, and number two, I am an employer of employees with W-2 w employees at my company. And so I am more than delighted to make sure that I'm paying my employees a living wage here in California. And so for these folks to be able to come to work and put in their effort and go home and take care of their families, we have to pay them a minimum wage that fits what looks like here in California. And for me to be a small business, business owner to be able to do this uh, with my employees, I am certain that multi-billion dollar corporations can do the same. Now, here's the thing. But People isn't it interesting they're not doing it to you? They're only doing it to some businesses. Right what we're talking about is we are talking about a council of people who are going to come together and figure out what works best for the employees. So this is not a law that is coming out. Okay, but employees in California versus well, Wait a minute. Let me interject in here. Let me interject here. And I want to I want to uh, kick this back to Elaine. The employees in California are marching, and the employees are asking for more money. So this means the employers Elaine, should be let, let me make this point here. So, so I want to kick it back to you. And this kind of piggybacks a little bit off of what Julio said. So ironically, there is this also University of California study out of Riverside uh, found that increasing minimum wage by 50 percent, it would drive up food prices by nearly 20 percent. So for, for low income families, that would be about one to, to three hundred dollars per year. Now, although these same families may directly benefit, of course, from this increased minimum wage, is the cost worth the benefit? Elena, so I want to kick it back to you. Sure. Here's the problem. What happens with the large corporations is whenever they are pushed to do something for the people, then they put the blame back on the people. Uh, listen, dollars and cents <laughs> make sense. You do not have to raise the prices. There's wiggle room. There's there. Uh, pe these companies are making money and they can pull that from somewhere else. You don't have to put that on the what consumer. What does that even mean? You, you obviously don't understand business. Yes, I do. Listen, every industry. every state, and so sir, am I. Sir, every state is its own it. economic. It's its own economic experiment. Every state business, economy has a different, has a completely different dynamic. You know, Alabama is completely matter. different than California. Listen, that's different than something. Washington. That's different let from New York. You, you can't do one. Okay, go ahead. Yes, Tell me can. something. Listen, here's the thing. When it comes to business, what you do is when you figure that you have to pay more in one area, you look through your company and you say, okay, where do we pull more money from so that we can fit this bill that we have here? If I have to pay my employees more, I need You're to You're speaking out in platitudes. That makes no sense. That's not what happens, It doesn't happens, make sense though. nationally. It's not, it's it not is theoretical. What happens. We have studies. It, we have actual instances exactly. where this has been tried and it we've seen not. the results. It's not and a hypothetical. And, not you know, if businesses are looking we at profit, know what yeah, there are certainly <laughs> business owners that, that so wouldn't be willing to do that. Exactly. Businesses are looking at profit. Look at some of that profit. You may not be as profitable, but at least you'll be able to hang on to your employees to stay in business. This thing is going to turn around. We already know it is because the economy always comes back around and comes back on top. I'm saying that we should have the conversation, allow the council to come together and figure out what to do. I'm not saying that we should definitely go right to two, to $22 an hour for fast food workers. Right. I'm saying Just figure it out. Have the conversation all right. And figure well, it panel, I thank you all once again. Uh, thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.